You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Send me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of In Case of Emergency. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in. I believe this is Luke's path. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. Alarm saying you are up, and let's go. All right. Um, okay, your hands are sweaty as you unsheathe it, awkwardly trying to find your rooting, your, try, find your footing amidst the constantly changing gravity. Stab on the floor. With two hands, you plunge the sword into the floor of the carriage, piercing through carpet and wood like butter. We've got a, I got a tree! The rope is quickly disappearing out the door. Luke wastes no time throwing it over the hilt of your sword, and the five of you feel the front wheels of the cart begin to pitch precariously forward. And then the rope goes taut, jerking the carriage to a sudden halt. Your body is tossed forward and back by the whiplash. That's going to hurt in the morning. <clears throat> out! Get out right now! He ushers the rest of the group out. Remus extends a hand to help you to your feet, which you gratefully accept. Th the sword! It'll be fine. We need to get the carriage away from the cliff face first. Oh, pretty. Battered, bruised, and exhausted, the party pulls back the carriage from the edge of the cliff. The basin at the bottom looks like it was once carved out by a roaring river, but at the present, there's a more modest stream of water flowing through. Once, when the, once the cart is stabilized, you retrieve your sword, unbent and unscratched, and resheath it at your hip. The sword can't be pull, can't be pulled out by anyone other than you, not even by the force of a carriage careening down the hill. The physics of that are a little bit troubling, but not as much as the fact that anyone can stab with, that, that anyone can stab that anyone can stab with your sword. But you're the only one that can pull it out. You're good at wedging a sword into places where it can't be taken out. Great. <laughs> You were hoping for something a little cooler, but it feels inappropriate to complain right at this moment. You join the rest of the group as they sit around the grass. It appears as though our journey will require a detour. Remus retrieves the map from his side and spreads it at the bottom of the grassy knoll, looking a little disappointed. We can follow the river. There's a town. Convivience. And not far from here. At the same time, Wes frowns and Luke lights up. Are you sure that's the closest? Conv... <clears throat> Let me see if I can do that voice again. <clears throat> Conviviance? There's supposed to be a book there I'm looking for. I've seen that one go. What book? There's another guy that's th who's theorized making magic into numbers. The true grim grimoire. But he did it in reverse. If you can break down magic into its most basic principles, you can use that like you can use that like building blocks to make anything. Oh, okay, so we're just doing full metal alchemists. Full metal alchemist. <laughs> numbers into magic! should find it. Yes. We'll keep an eye out for it. Thanks! Luke gives you an amused look you can't quite place. After you disperse, Cedric calls over from the carriage, where he's squatted by a broken wheel. This... the wheel didn't just break on the road. I could have told you that. People don't make wheels that snap when they go over pebbles. Then what did? Cedric runs his thumb over a missing part of the rim. It's smooth. If it snapped, there'd be splinters. Hmm. It must have been an unfortunately timed pocket of void. It's possible. It was done on is it, is it possible it was done on purpose? Only if earthquakes or thunderstorms can be done to only if thunder earthquakes or thunderstorms can be done deliberately. There's no void, gods. It's just a part of the world. It just happens. At this point, you just hope you don't have to walk. The sun high above you, the five of you follow the river until your feet ache. Mood is sullen. Even Luke is quiet. He doesn't even bother to complain about how heavy it must be to trudge in, trudge in his insane getup. Remus keeps staring at the map, muttering occasionally that your surroundings don't exactly match what's depicted. Oh my. Nice for you. Eventually a town looms in the distance, dotted with red-roofed houses and white plaster walls. It's placed right by the river, which stretches a little wider here, water lapping gently by the wooden docks. The river is calmer than expected. Not only that, but as you grow closer to the town, you spot a raised drawbridge that would allow you cross to cross the river. You could bypass the forest and the mines and cliffs altogether. Remus seems to draw the same conclusion, because he furrows his brow and rubs his chin in thought. It's well into the afternoon by the time you arrive at convi convivian Conviviance. Perhaps we should rest here for the night, West Blanches. We can keep going. We'll camp just outside of town. We're making good progress anyway. No, I think I'd like to speak to someone about why the drawbridge wasn't on the map. That simply isn't right. I don't want to find my book! Cedric doesn't speak up, but he does look pretty tired. One second, y'all. Let me drink my water. Ah, alright. 
nice rainy day. I was out there in it for about almost two hours. Yep. Oh, man. Oh, it's nice to be warm again. Good lord, I was... Mm, skin was so cold. Anyway, Cedric doesn't speak up, but he does look pretty tired. Uh, let's see. Look like that, okay. It wouldn't hurt to take a break. I can do with a rest. Now that you're getting a better look at him, he does look worse for wear. That's four to one. Very well. We should first ascertain when the bridge will be lowered. As Remus, as Remus turns towards the direction of the bridge, a guard approaches the group. Halt! That's just like the Oblivion Guards. Under orders of the Mayor of Convivience, no one is to leave the town until we apprehend the culprit behind the attempted murder of Lord Boshia. And how long will that take? If the guard recognizes the king of the entire realm, he doesn't show it. As long as it takes, citizen. Luke's eyebrows rise. Did someone say murder mystery? Attempted murder I mean, attempted murder. All I'm hearing is reason to stay. Come on, if we solve this murder to get out of town and catch a break, maybe look for some books in the meantime. Win-win! Did you say Bozia? I know the Bozias. If anyone's after them, it's their rival family, House, Remor House Remoran. Good. You four seem to have this under control. Investigate the attempt on Lord Bozia's life, and we will continue in the morning. He turns around without waiting for an answer, his cape whisking behind him and disappearing into the crowd. Cedric sighs. His shaky breath, his breath shaky as it exits his nostrils. Let's get, let's head to the Bozias. Maybe we can find more information there. You should rest. Um, let's go. You should rest. Did you need a break? Oh, we can grab a room. I'll grab a room for him. You two solve the murder, and I'll find a nice bookstore to read a bedtime story from. No, I'm fine. Let's go. Oh, okay. Oh, God, beautiful. Hmm. The four of you approach the Boshia, Man the Boshia Manor. A heavy golden knocker is embedded in the mouth of a small caniform. Knock. You rap twice on the dark wooden door. You hear people talking inside. I'll wait outside. Luke grabs him by the back of the shirt. Hey, I'm, if I'm sacrificing looking for the secrets of the universe for this, you can stand around for five seconds. A voice emanates from the knocker. H Hello? Oh, it's her. H Hello? Lady Boja, uh, this is Cedric, working for the Crown. We met many moons ago. My acquaintances and I are here to investigate your husband's case. There's a long silence on the other end. You begin to think she's ignoring you when finally a sigh breaks, breaks the silence and the door clicks open. It's Electra. Mother's not here right now. I'll be upstairs. There's no one on the other side. You step into a lavish foyer. Foyer, I often say foyer. Foyer, with the fireplace crackling in its hearth. Oh, hello there. Oh, you've ruined it. There's a young man standing in the center of the room, back to the four of you. He holds a sheet of paper with writing in it on one hand. What? Excuse me? It's no issue. It's not as though I was practicing for my father's funeral. He sighs loudly and turns to face you, his face puckered like he's just tasted something sour. He makes eye contact with, contact with Wes and freezes. Here, Wes's breath catch behind you. Wesley? Sky? Oh no! You look well. Sky sniffs indignantly, a cool air settling between the two of them. I, um, should go. I have to find somewhere for us to stay for the night. Stay here. The Bogia Estate has multiple guest rooms. We couldn't possibly impose. I see. Not that, not that you stayed in any of the said guest rooms when you were over. Oh god. Oh god is right. This is painful. Wes has been here before? We're here about your father. How about the weather? How about that weather? What do you mean, when you were over? Wes's eye twitches. Looks like he wants to shrivel up and die. He hasn't told you. Well, a gentleman never kisses and tells. You can't tell if he's talking about Wes or himself. That's not what we're here about. We're trying to find who made an attempt on your father's life. Let's see. Uh, how about the weather? Wow, do you guys normally get such nice weather down here? My father went to sleep last night and never woke up. He's not dead, at least not yet. But I'm preparing just in case. Never woke up. When did he go to sleep? After dinner, as always. He had his usual glass of wine and passed out upstairs. The father usually wakes up at the crack of dawn and goes for a run. He never woke up this morning. And believe me, we tried to wake him up. Yet? Why do you think he's going to die? Sky shrugs. The father's a powerful man. 
He has a lot of enemies. He always believed someone would try to poison him. Preparing? What are you preparing for? His funeral, of course. I wouldn't want to be caught without a touching eulogy as his only son. This guy is starting to get on your nerves. People process grief in different ways. Oh, right, because your dad died, so this reminds you of that. Is it his kind? Is it his, is it, is it his situation or his attitude that's familiar? Everyone here needs to go outside. Touch grass. You shake your head to clear your thoughts. You need focus. Don't you feel even a bit sad that your dad might be dying? It is a little bit suspicious. Is there an inheritance if he dies? If you think I'm getting anything, think again. Electra's his favorite. Electra? My sister. She was supposed to leave today to get married, but, uh, well, you know. Father's dying. She's upstairs, if you want to talk to her. He glances down at the paper in his hand again, then looks up. Like, he's surprised to see you still here. Thanks. We'll go talk to her now, if that's alright. Upstairs, the king has been moved to a guest room to rest. It might not be a proper bedroom, but the place is extravagant nonetheless. Thick blue drapes hang from a window overlooking the courtyard. Opposite it is a beautiful armoire of polished wood that looks expensive. A young woman sits on the edge of the extravagant king-sized bedding. Bed, dabbing, dabbing at, at Lord Bogia's forehead with a damp cloth. His eyes are closed, and he shudders infrequently in his unconscious state. She notices you enter, and her eyes widen. Cedric, it's good to see you again. You too. I heard you're getting married. Electricized. There's no... Like there's no good way to answer the question. Yes, it's an arranged marriage. I was supposed to leave today, but the, the roads are closed. And Allie? She's fine. Electra nods towards the blade hanging from his waist, really eager to change the subject. I'm glad to see you make use of our gift. Cedric nods. He almost looks as, he looks almost exhausted as the Lord. Of course, we'd like to help we'd like to help your father any way we can. I don't know what happened. He had dinner with the Remorants last night. If anyone wanted to see him gone... Did anything out of the ordinary happen last night? Why were you having dinner? It was a farewell party to send me off. Maybe they were trying to strike while I was gone. But you weren't... But you weren't leaving until this morning. If anything, your father's death prevented you from leaving. Who would benefit from you staying? The Remorants, maybe? Sky isn't ready to take over the business. If it wasn't married yet, we wouldn't have an alliance we could lean on. So, poison in the dining room by the Remorants. Case closed. Why hasn't anyone been arrested? Electra's lips pull together in a tight line. There's no evidence, which doesn't mean that they haven't done it. So, what we need are clues. We have to check out their their place. Luke promptly marches out the door like a man on a mission. West close on his tail. Wait! Cedric sighs. They've already left. He hovers by the foot of the bed. Watching the weak, watching the weak rise and fall of Lord Boccia's form, he cocks his head and seems to study something on the. What? That? Huh? That was a dog. He cocks his head as he seems to study something on the Lord's hand. Hey, what happened to your father's ring? Electra glances over to where Cedric is looking. She shrugs. I don't know. Maybe he took it off when he went to bed. Cedric frowns. Maybe it was stolen by whoever did this. Cedric rubs his chin in thought, and, stare, and starts to head off for the door, motioning for you to follow. Thanks for your time, Electra. We will f we'll find out who did this to your father. Yeah, uh, we'll be right back. It's a beautiful castle. The three of you walk down the cobbled road towards the home of the Remorants, Cedric taking the lead. At the end of a long road lined by cypress trees, you finally arrive at the Remorant Mansion, where Lady Remorant invites you all for tea. Tea sounds good right now. I actually had some delicious coffee in a, in a lovely diner about an hour or so ago. Hmm. As you enter, Cedric hangs, Cedric hangs back to whisper to you. Don't drink any of it. What? Oh. You wink at him in reassurance. You've got this. Inside, Lady Rembrandt sits at a table and gestures for you to make yourselves at home. It's terrible what happened to Lord Bosia. I can't imagine how distraught the family must be. She pats under her eyes with a handkerchief, though there's no tears. Uh-huh. Everyone must have been shocked by the news. Is your family doing all right? I knew you were close. Lady Remrant sighs loudly. Oh, I imagine it's much harder for the Bosius and their children. Poor Sky. He's too inexperienced to run the entire business on his own. Yes, poor Sky indeed. Right, and I heard your family also runs a business? Lady Remrant sniffs in disdain. We've had a hard spot for this season. Yes, but we all have. What with the river diminished as it is. 
nothing we cannot bounce back from. Once that godforsaken void is driven back... It will be. Cedric reassures her, sounding determined. So, your business isn't doing very well. Lady Rembrandt looks the two of you up and down. You're supposed to be the ones grilling her for answers, but her gaze makes you feel like you're the ones being questioned. Eventually, she simply sighs and dabs at her dry eyes again. I can assure you boys, our family had nothing to do with Lord Bosia's illness. And no matter how bad I got it, it got, our family would never be so desperate as to stop, as to stoop to assassination, thank you very much. Oh, excuse me. Lying, yes. Destroying someone socially, certainly. But doing something illegal like murder or, like murder or thievery, well, actually stealing anything from the Bosius would be a terrible idea. And no fence would ever buy it. Everything they own has their family crest emblazoned ever so godly on it. Did you know Lord Bosia wore the most detestable ring on his finger at all times? That are nods to you meaningfully. It was obscene. Now, if anything were criminal, it would be his crimes against fashion. Lady Remet fans herself as she remembers an entire slew of apparent offensive outfits. At any rate, allow me to make your job easier by assuring you that the House of Remoran had nothing to do with this. We'd be the prime suspects, first of all, and I simply don't have the constitution for murder. It would be utterly foolish to make a move against the Bosias. She looks at you pointedly. She's no fool. She seems to be saying... If I can offer any advice, it's that I'm not so certain this was foul play. We all knew Lord Bosia's drinking habit would get to him eventually. He was perfectly fine when we saw him last night for our monthly dinner. His drinking habit? Oh, yes. He drank it for every meal. And then some. You think he had too much wine? It's certainly possible. After all, after all this time, maybe his body finally gave out. Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye